Congratulations. I think it officially went down a storm. <laughs> I really invited quite a lot of friends, so <laughs> they have to say that. It's not just your friends in the audience. It's, it's my enemies, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what came first in this in the conceptual and conception of the show was it the characters the sisters was it doing a comedy about mental health and loneliness what, what was the what was the spark the money I think it was the money <laughs> um, how much money could I get and how quick um, turns out not a lot and it takes a long time um, <laughs> what I just wrote that when I was 21 a year ago um, no I um, I think the uh, I think the, a question. Yeah, um, I think the Sharon and I were writing another show where we were playing sisters, and uh, that one uh, didn't work out. And I was sitting at home with my sister, and I think I wrote this version very quickly in about twelve hours. Not this actual, but the first version of it in about twelve hours. After I'd say two years, we were working on something else, and I was like, "What about this then?" And um, and that's the one they kind of took the idea to. Um, in every redraft and every different stage, different elements would come in. I think maybe the idea of dealing. I hate um, a maudlin energy around certain subjects because I don't personally believe it helps, and I believe the more you can do with uh, laughter, the better. So I think with this, I kind of, the aim was the sisters are the core heart of it um, and a relationship I know quite well. I say that like I'm going out with my sister, but <laughs> she's um, married someone else. Um, <laughs> but um, I think loneliness is at the core of it. And I was reading something interesting about how loneliness is a, this disease uh, which genuinely affects society and how we feel about each other, but also everyone's afraid to say they have it in case you might catch it too. And um, so what I wanted to do was kind of make a comedy about loneliness because I think it's something, I even read that like if you're in hospital and you have um, some sort of accident, you recover doubly quick if you've got a support network or community around you and loneliness has a huge effect on our, on our, um, on our bodies. And so I wanted to tr try and make a comedy about loneliness, but it's a tough sell, so I said it's my sisters. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and that is the core. I, I think that's what the when every character I was writing was always like, what's their loneliness or what's their mm. what's the the core thing? But yeah, because Sharon, the two of you have known each other for years. I mean, you met on Dead Boss, is that yeah. right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Which I remember very well. <laughs> and um, so was, did you want to work with, do you want, to, and your production company's help, it's made and everything, so was it like, I'm going to dive in and make this show with my friend, is that kind um, of like? Well, when, as soon as I met Ash, I sort of fell in love with her, and uh, we we did that show, Dead Boss, that, I'm glad you remember it, <laughs> I don't think anyone else does, but um, yeah, she just made me laugh a lot, and uh um, and from that point, we were sort of trying to find something. We were sort of writing a film together. And then, you know, this other project that Ash was telling you about that we spent years on and it didn't go anywhere. And, <laughs> and then when she wrote the first version... It was about paedophiles. It wasn't. <laughs> Lighthearted approach on that, too. It didn't work out. Um, but but luckily, by that by that point, we'd set Merman up. And it, but it was in the very, very early stages. And I think we... Yeah. We had our first meetings when you would come in. We were in a little corridor in someone else's <laughs> building, pretending it was an office. You know, by wearing in a box. <laughs> so uh, I got a company now, and uh, I got a bit of cash together. You want to join in? I'm like, we had no cash, um, but um, but you know, th this kind of came out of it. Um, the the other idea got knocked back, and then Ash sort of bounced back with this, and she really did write it in. Uh, I'm not sure it was 12 hours. It was definitely under under a working week and yeah. uh and then we we brought it into channel four um myself and clelia and ash and uh and you could just see that there was really something there and and the main thing was yes it started off about sisters but i think it's become something so much bigger now there's such a beautiful message in there and even though yeah i think lo loneliness and and all that is at the heart of it ash's whole thing was like was that there was a positive message and the the working title for a while was happy because that's what you wanted people to feel sort of at the end of it and not I to think it was to start broken and to show I think there there are a lot of shows amazing shows at the moment that show a breakdown to a kind of crashing point and what I wanted to do was start broken 
and show it's once you choose life or you choose to live it's a very the the dailiness and relentlessness of getting better and getting to a place of wanting to live and hopefulness is 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 a daily battle and it's it's not this it's sort of like that and i think i want to show that in a sort of upward energy rather than a sort of decline and i mean you guys haven't seen five and six but at the end of six i'd, I'd hope that that's where we we get to um so every time we're worried something will be like no it's going to be okay and i think maybe that's a bit more true to life um than everything kind of crashing at the end mm. it's sort of more of a but how did you find slope. getting the tone that because that tone the tonal shifts between incredibly poignant moments that you've got and really funny moments, particularly the two of you. Like, it, 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 there, are, there are scenes that go from the two of you being really funny together as great sisters and, and having these quite heavy moments of clashing as well. Was that something, did that come naturally, the kind of dealing with those tonal shifts? I think maybe it's, I remember seeing Sharon way before uh, I first auditioned for Dead Boss to play her sister. I remember hearing like what I thought was my voice on telly, going, what the fuck is that? And I was pulling, and I was like, oh my God, there's an Irish person on telly and watching this show and seeing like there's there is an episode in that that deals with suicide in a really funny way and tonally <laughs> it's funny like i don't i don't see it as like isn't that an interesting t it's where my i would sit naturally and maybe culturally where irish people sit naturally um there's actually a scene in in the other show we were writing that, that didn't go, which mimics a scene in Derry Girls, and I know we've got Nicola and Siobhan in from uh, Derry Girls, which is amazing here. And that whole show is this big, funny comedy about the troubles in Northern Ireland. And there is something, I think, in an Irish sentimentality that that goes into death and finds a hilarity in it. Like, we celebrate our dead by laying them out on a table and having sandwiches around them. <laughs> <laughs> terrible loss, terrible loss. Did you make these? They're lovely. <laughs> you know, um, and there's there's a scene in Dairy Girls where they're trying to get the earrings off the corpse, and we had one. Do you remember the oh one when God. we were trying to get the... Yeah, yeah we had one where we were trying to un redress our mommy <laughs> in another uh, thing we were writing, and we were trying to get, like, you know... Um, makeup wipes to kind of take off a bit of the it was a bit much they over um, her yeah yeah they over judged her up so she looked too fabulous <laughs> in the car. and that that to me is where our our sentimentality sits so i don't find it i don't find those two uh, being polar opposites to each other i find that as most people in life and i i i think the worst thing for anyone if they're sick is creating funereal atmosphere around them no matter what's going on like oh god don't talk to mary she's recently been unwell it's, <laughs> people get through life with far more jokes than i think we see sometimes like people don't look out the window with kind of big old bits of music as much as kind of is shown sometimes i think so yeah so i think that it, it's it's sort of naturally there and it's there in catastrophe and it's there in pulling and a lot of what sharon does so yeah it does feel to sharon like this is part of there's a lot of that now comedy now we call it comedy but it's dealing with but it's not I hear what you're saying Boyd it was stuff. a shock <laughs> no it's funny <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 not for everyone not no, for it's everyone. brilliantly funny but it is, does <laughs> does deal with in interesting issues it deals with real it, there's a realism to comedy now. do you think it, it, like, do you feel there's part of a kind of movement of that's the way comedy's going that this is part of a of that realism and yet being really funny yeah I mean it, it's it's definitely um, there's a bit of a, a trend there, I guess. But I mean, for for us, it, it's um, you know, it, it's it's always about the story um, first, and and I think that's how you approach things as well. And then because we're whores for laughs, we kind of uh, <laughs> go 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 <laughs> go back in and make sure there's, there's plenty of those. But you know, um, I I mean, I still love stupid. Um, broad comedy I, st I still you know I, I think if everyone was pouring their hearts out onto the screen and everyone was dealing with their own sort of existential angst we'd all get very bored very quickly but I think you know when there's a good story to tell and you have you know someone who's very good at telling it and yeah. you know why not Gavin um, the cast is extraordinary like it, you know smallish roles you know it's a big it's a big ensemble apart from the two of you was that was putting that cast together difficult, or did they did they see the script and they're like, yeah, we want to do this? 
I think for the reasons we were just talking about, the sort of the tone of it, which has always sort of been a big tone. Well, <laughs> 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 yes, Gavin, um, what do you uh, think? I think, I think <laughs> when, when we go to the <laughs> casting of it, um, and we had amazing casting director Catherine Willis, who's here, um, is trying to find actors who can fit very comfortably in this world of what you were saying, which is comedy and drama. Mm. And I think what we've done is we've created a very naturalistic world and in order to be funny it has to be believable you know we can't push the realms of reality too much we can't compromise the integrity of the story for a gag mm. so finding the right actors who could do that drama and comedy was i guess the biggest challenge yeah but it's also it. part of the team so alex i first alex our wonderful director who also worked on mad fat diary which is again something that deals with like sad topics but in a funny way um like you can't you can't take everything too seriously and so I've known Alex for years and I loved like he first worked on we first met doing that show with Tom Basden and um, who's a comedy writer who writes things like plebs but also quite naturalistic stuff and I loved how Alex worked with actors and then Gav just I mean cracks us up so much and so your sense of humor intentionally. is yeah, intentionally yeah. oh no no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but like we have such a laugh together and and in terms of putting uh, together a team of people who are who understand the difference and the same with Catherine our, our casting director is, is Scottish and has a lovely dark sense of humor like us and so for a, a perfect example is um he's not in this the shows you've watched but is Freddie who's the ex-boyfriend some of the lines he has in one of the flirtier scenes is like calling me a knobhead and all that kind of stuff. And Catherine, you know, some people were like, oh, is he a really mean person? I was like, Catherine's like, no, he just sounds like he could be Scottish and he's flirting. <laughs> um, and, and to know, to understand that tone and theme, I think yeah. that the people you put around you have a very similar sense of humor. So you never feel like you're being irreverent with subjects. Yeah. But also we were lucky because um, Channel 4 commissioned us to make a... A taster, which um, Alex directed, and mm -hmm. um, there, there was very few people in. It was kind of like you and me, me. and not yeah. much else. Yeah. But so w when Ash had finished finished the scripts, the scripts went out. But we also had this beautiful thing, you know, to sort of show, you know. So I know that's how a lot of people jumped on board because they pilot. Yeah. yeah, they were able to <clears> sort of see what it would be, and they knew it was, mm -hmm. you know. But from but from that, because the, obviously the two of you are so good in it and have such amazing chemistry. It's trying to find other actors who can sort of, when yeah. Sharon isn't in those scenes with Ashley, and can sort of match her for her sort of amazing acting level. <laughs> Literally paid to say that, to be fair, <laughs> Literally paid. Yeah. And Alex, how was it for you? Did you get into the, that, tone, that tone of it pretty quickly? Did you find, how did you find that directing work? It's probably just where my natural sensibility lies, I think. Um, it's just a very happy marriage for me. For when <clears throat> Ash asked me to do it, I. I guess I expected it to be funny, but there was a kind of specificity to the uh, to, 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 to the whole thing that that just gave it a resonance and a depth, and it just kind of I don't know. It, it, their chemistry was was there from the get go, and and set the tone for the whole thing. And then I guess in the sort of the harder moments, it was just about letting the performances be quite cliched as it sounds, quite real. And, um, you know, it was quite important to kind of sit back and, and observe it rather than, tr I think, you know, truth be told, when we shot the teaser, we kind of, we did get lots of shots of Anya looking really distressed and we did this kind of, you know, I guess quite cliched sort of stuff. And actually the performance was so good, it just held. And, 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 and doing less with this show kind of gave us more because, because the performances were just so strong, and the writing was so strong. I mean, it 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 did kind of. There's a Billy Wilder thing about good directing, good good writing directs itself, and I think, you know, there was so much of this show that that the conversations were just very easy in terms of what we wanted to do with it. Yeah, you did fuck all really. Like, <laughs> at the end of the day, yeah. like Billy Wilder. Yeah. I mean, a lot of heavy lifting on this part of the... <laughs> Come on, Alex. Yeah. <laughs> you did a great job. No, but actually, Alex would inspire me for things. Do you remember you showed me that scene from the... Oh, I was going to say Woody Allen movie, problematic reference. Um, <laughs> but there's a scene in... when what, what What's the, the thing that we loved? Hannah which and is, her sisters, yeah. Hannah and her sisters, yeah, where there's this scene where... And it, and it is something that, like Alex would say, you don't always need to see everyone going... Here's their face, shot-wise. Here's their face. Here's their face. And I actually think when there's a relationship between two sisters or family members, sometimes hearing something from the back of their head 
uh, and like we have that kind of shot which is shot by Edward Moore who's is Edward here Ed Moore is he our GOP he's no. not gonna say he's not gonna say <laughs> if he likes it or not um but uh where we shot the whole thing kind of in one scene almost like a play and that was so that was one of my funnest days on set because we would just like run through and the camera would just follow us around and you weren't trying to kind of set up shots all the time and that's something you set out to do and then I kind of fit my writing around what you would want in that scene and it felt it really felt lovely because sometimes when you stop a scene in the middle of the flow and set it up for a shot you've lost the momentum of something and I think audiences need a lot less than than we think a lot of the time we don't have to see every reaction all the time and to mm. pick and choose those moments which Alex is another one now I want to ask you a bit about your the, your, the characters the relationship you have with Tobias Menzies character and mm -hmm. his son which is mm -hmm. really interesting and which in episode two we see how you meet them and everything yes yeah but before we do that we're gonna have a look at the trailer for the rest of the series which includes some scenes of that so before we do that let's have a look at this should we all duck down yeah or? duck down <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we were going to talk about the, the <laughs> Tobias Menzies character, but we have to ask about the zombie <laughs> thing, which is, looks oh, extraordinary. Just that we both wanted to do that our entire <laughs> lives. Yeah. That's all you need to know. <laughs> that or run away by the cores, yeah. which we'll do for you now. <laughs> Close the door. Oh, no, um, yeah. But the scenes with you and Tobias Menzies and his son are so kind of, I don't know, there's a poignancy and, a, and the, like, clearly they're dealing with grief and loneliness as well that did, did, did having that relationship and those characters was that did that come early on when you were writing it and how was it filming those with the kid and everything yeah um uh multi-pronged question sorry yes. Boyd, where to begin <laughs> um i think uh what i'm tr uh, so you guys haven't seen episode two but it, that's where we sort of meet uh richard who's tobias menzi's character and he had a son with someone uh and never really helped raise that person but then she passes away and so he comes to live uh, with him quite suddenly. And I suppose with that, it was, I had a lot of themes in my life uh, come up about um, uh, the emotional language that we allow men to have and the idea of two young, a young man and uh, a, an older man grieving in a house together and this language that isn't happening and the silence of grief and getting to know each other and that sort of barrier of, of not being able to talk to each other and in comes Anya with kind of a million words and, and, and becomes that sort of like bridge between the two of them. Um, and that's sort of what I wanted to explore there. Um, so it was definitely on purpose that he doesn't have, say, for example, a daughter. Um, it's just two men at a kind of seminal age. And I think uh, in terms of working with Dorian, who's a gorgeous young actor, Alex was fantastic with, with that because <laughs> it's a very, when we were auditioning, do you remember when- He we was the first person we cast actually. <clears throat> yes, he was the first person we'd cast. Um, and when you're auditioning kids, it's really difficult to be like, so, your mother's dead, <laughs> <laughs> work with it. You know, it's a really tough thing to do. And we're having these kind of kids coming in and being like, oh my God, you're so cute, I don't want to talk to you about it. And it's a really difficult thing for, for a young person to grasp and to be like, it's fake, but to imagine it or not. And um, it, it would definitely, like, it's, a, it's, a, it's an odd thing to, and, you know, Catherine, you were amazing with that as well. When, when you're bringing in young people, and it's probably going to be one of their first acting jobs to be very careful, um, uh, what um, emotion resonance gets left afterwards and Alex was amazing with that in terms of how you'd communicate with a young actor is you know through some of our scenes especially you know that scene where he gets up and walks away in episode five I think That's well I mean it was the, the casting did a lot of the work but I think I think it was that Ashling was involved we, it was the one bit of casting we actually involved you in kind of directly where you'd read with the other actors and yeah. you just kind of uh, you kind of have to capture something pretty authentic because there's not going to be the technique to kind of um, necessarily fall back on when it's you know late in the day and you're rushing. So um, it was kind of about finding out who he was a little bit and yeah. and, and just making him feel relaxed and, and you know was, you do tell a lot of jokes on set, so it's not hard. Huh? <laughs> um, we had to you know work that into the schedule. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Day. <laughs> Ashley, we really need to shoot. I know, but it's an anecdote, and it's it's really it's going to get somewhere. Um, we, we we actually the the editing was younger in the script initially. Yeah, 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 yeah. And when we met Dorian, he was so great that we're like, let's make him yeah. twelve. 
And, and you know, I, I think there's something different about a 12-year-old kid as opposed to a 7-year-old kid. And what we sort of found through the audition process, what we wanted to avoid was the sort of maybe uh, cutesier element of mm. it. That it's it's kind of a, a very different thing when, it, when, it, when a young kid's on the cusp of adulthood mm. dealing with grief. It sort of shuts down. I think their uh, emotional language a lot more than Definitely. in a novel. But that was something we discovered through the, the casting yeah, process. Through the casting yeah. process. Mm. And the one thing, I this is the first time I'd ever been on the other side of casting. You, I mean, I've auditioned for you before, but this is the first time I was seeing casting tapes and, and people coming through. And sometimes you'd see a tape for someone and it would be so amazing, but they wouldn't be right for the part. And that felt very... Like, God, I've been an actor for almost 17 years and I've auditioned for God knows everything under the sun. And to see that someone might come through and be amazing, but not right for a part. And then why someone else might bring something to a script. It was it was really My fascinating. Dress just split open. Did it? <laughs> for fuck's sake. Too fat for oh, Hollywood, man. boys and girls. I'm gutted. Well, I mean, you could maybe, do you know what? Don't draw attention to it. <laughs> would have known would have been yeah. oblivious yeah, yeah, yeah. but I was going to yeah. ask you the next question which is yeah. you have to be thin enough <laughs> <laughs> your scenes with Indira Varma are, are incredible as well and it, how, how was that to film those and how, because that's quite if Trump has been quite rare to see a relationship kind of forming <laughs> between two adult women kind of becoming friends visibly before our eyes yeah I mean she's uh, <laughs> she's um, she's such a wonderful actress and, and I, I'd been trying to work with her for um, a few years so when Ash wrote the part we were just she was one of the first um, a- actresses we thought of for, for that part wasn't she yeah um, I couldn't believe she said yes it yeah, kind of made yeah. sense when we thought of Indira yeah. I think until, that, until all that we didn't quite know who that character was I think yeah. Yeah. and then suddenly I mean, it I, the, the, I would say the only tricky thing is that there's so much going on in each episode and you know, there's only a certain amount of time you can dedicate to each character and, and, yeah. and storyline. So we had this very small amount of time on, on screen. And, and so to try and, you know, um, capture that, what it's like to, to meet someone who's sort of, you know... Um, and that's where in casting, like, uh, I have to say, like, everyone who's in the show, a lot of the supporting cast does such amazing things because the show technically has to be between 23 to 25 minutes. And it's such a small amount of time to get a lot of stuff in and, and and so many threads with different people and to have a supporting cast who can sometimes with a look convey so much. And even in the editing, I find it very, it's my first time editing a show. And in the editing, I find it so incredibly difficult to lose sometimes a scene with an actor I loved or there'd be a line. I'm like, oh no, not that one. That would, there is so funny in that. But then to trust that the people we've cast uh, I'm seeing Lou, who's one of my best pals here, who plays our psychic. Um, but like with a sort of like a little half open eye, you know, going, well, does does sort of so much in a, in a small amount of space. And so when we were casting the cast, we have like when I think about writing for them again, I sort of get like a sort of like like a seal of the ball. I'm just so excited because you find people who can just lift something else off the page. And we often talk about how supporting cast in a show makes a show i love in atlanta which is a show i absolutely love and um, uh, donald glover brings in people sometimes to deliver a burger and that person will be on screen for probably 20 seconds and he'll have given a whole kind of life to that person and for me having been an actor for a long time who comes in for two lines it's when when someone cares enough about the lines or when you can't come in and, and, and do something with a line it's just it's a godsend so everyone is because yeah, could Kadeev as well playing yeah, another ladies man those scenes with him your yeah. flatmate being, were really funny yeah right? and Kadeev brought so much to play my flatmate and and actually I know you were asking before Boyd about about improv um in terms of how there isn't a huge amount of improv between myself and Sharon we'd often mess about with stuff which is kind of naturally there with us but um, there's one episode five is a scene where I we're having a, a, a scene watching the football and I was like, I'll write some placeholders. <laughs> oh, and yeah. The cast on the this day will cr- know about football. <laughs> but my kind of placeholders for like, come on, people in the middle of the field, run along. Kick you the know, ball. Kick it faster than the other boys on the other team. Ball guys. 
And um, so I was like, don't worry, Khadif and Treve will kind of fill in that space on the day. And we didn't know until about, I'd say, seven days in that you have absolutely no, not a single bit of interest in football. What is football, you would say? But like a lot of improv, and it made me laugh so much because he kept on coming up with kind of names for footballers like, oh no, Johnny Leche is in, in the foreground. And it really... <laughs> And that was probably our most improvised day with sort of making up bits and stuff, which is brilliant. But, um, Needless to say, there was a lot of ADR. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> reading in football script. And, and also in episode four, um, uh, episode four is where uh, our family, our kind of small family of three women, goes to meet Vish's family. And in that, there was a huge amount of improv between, uh, I know Jeff Mers is here as well, um, between all of our families and just kind of throwing stuff around. They're our most improvised, I think, episodes because you need to create an environment where the actors bring a lot. Mm. And so I think when we were casting as well, we were looking at who on the day will will, will bring a lot of improv. And, and Nicol, you're here as well. It was amazing improv. Um, kind of throwing stuff out there and capturing it. So that was, mm. yeah. We meant to right. talk about the look of the show, but Alex, because mm. it looks beautiful. Like there, I'm, I was thinking there's a shot right really alone when you come out of rehab where you're out of focus and you're in focus. And it just, there's some really interesting little visual. Yeah, we f- fired the focus puller. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry I brought it up. <laughs> Sorry I brought it up. <laughs> but did you talk about what the visual style of the piece and how, what, what were you thinking? Yeah, we, I mean, Ad- Ash has mentioned Atlanta. It's sort of, <laughs> if you don't know, it's kind of a, a kind of a game changer in terms of just the photographic ambition of it. And mm. I was just probably got annoyingly excited about it with um, <laughs> Sinead, the costume designer, and, and Debbie and then Tim, the designers. And... Um, yeah, it, it it just that show kind of made me feel like yeah, let's just embrace it. We <coughs> chose the slightly pretentious two three five aspect ratio, but then um, classic. Uh, <laughs> Talk uh, to me about aspect ratio. <laughs> hey, um, we're in the BFI, yeah. um, and uh, yeah, that I think I think then we knew, always knew that that it, it wasn't going to be an ad lib show, but would have that overlappy feel of something completely real, and then kind of having that against something that had a you know, just, I guess the kind of a visual ambition just meant that the, the, the tone of the show, which we've talked about sitting in that place, sort of between comedy and drama, just would would sit quite well. And I think, um, yeah, I think as well, Woody Allen was a reference. You know, just... just We're allowed to mention him. He's allowed to mention him. Just, yeah. just, just, just beautiful, yeah. sounds boring, but blocking, just acts as talking quickly and moving around elegantly and, and in that kind of dance. It's just sort of playful and fun and and not traditional TV, but but um, kind of lent itself to, to certainly to Ashley and Sharon's kind of, um, you know, uh, on-screen relationship. Also, why not make something pretty and allow everyone to do their, their best jobs? Mm. And we were, uh, I've never, ever worked with a better crew, and I've been doing this a long time, and everyone within their jobs just stepped up, whether it's, I'm not not being biased, but Sinead, the costume designer, is my sister. And, um, (laughs) but her her eye for colour was amazing, and her eye for colour, even in the pilot, influenced Alex, and then our DOP, DOPs, uh, are are amazing. And and so, like, why not get everyone to have their best day at work every day? And it doesn't mean you can't still have, gags or mum but that that felt like if everyone gets to um if everyone gets to be a, as creatively fulfilled as is possible within budget um <laughs> then that's a lovely day at work and i think that's a big part of it. and i think ashley was really keen for it not to be cute so it was things like if we mm. found a park we didn't just want a picture postcard kind of pretty park mm. you know it had to sort of hold the eye visually but then you know i cycled around london to find a park with a building site in the background because it just slightly kind of added that bit of grit that felt appropriate to something that was so kind of truthful mm. and, and realistic yeah may- in, in most situations that's what we're trying to avoid <laughs> is it, it can be it can be funny but we wanted to avoid cutesy mm. and as as much as we can with that and it was the same with with costume to avoid it being like new girl but with depression um, <laughs> <laughs> genuinely <laughs> And we would often have those conversations between mm. us as like, is, is that what it's falling into? Because that doesn't feel as, as sort of And with music real. as well, that was a yeah. big conversation. Yeah. yeah, the music is quite striking, actually. Kind of not usual comedy music. Where, 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 where did the music come from? How did that... that is a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, uh, it was a journey. <laughs> <laughs> through, from music that we wanted but couldn't afford. Mm. <laughs> um, and then sort of trying to find, I think the sort of cultural collision of the music we've gone for felt right. 
um, for the show. But I think it just having something unexpected in a show mm. like this just sort of seemed something that just sort of jarred actually yeah, worked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. I mean, it, you know, and, and there was probably first versions of some of the episodes where there was a kind of sadder, sweeter bit of music to go alongside a sadder, sweeter moment. And then we it just felt like it wasn't working. And so, yeah. you know, go for something that could, turns that on its head. You know? And I genuinely feel passionately about this. And if anyone in the audience has, has, has gone through anything, that you can't, you can have a difficult conversation then come out of it with a joke. And it's not being irreverent about the subject matter. And I think music had to do that as well. Sometimes when we would have a sadder moment, rather than to sort of, and I, I hope, I don't know if we've achieved this or not, but uh, what we were trying to achieve is not to kind of like dawdle into a maudlin energy where you get stuck there, that you could be kind of yanked out of it with music. And that's okay, because that's what happens in life. Sometimes you're having a difficult conversation or a breakup with someone, and someone goes, hey, are you ready to order yet? And you're like, oh, Jesus, you know, like that's what happens in real life, that something swoops in and kind of punches you out of a sort of maudlin moment. And that's maybe what we're trying to do with music sometimes, mm. I think, as well. Um, I'm trying not to do that classic sort of indie music sort of sort of vibe that seemed quite typical of this type of genre. Yeah. Trying to do something a bit different. I think, yeah, just don't take yourselves too or your seriously. work too seriously. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, in, and sort of having a mix of commercial and score, that was quite important to us, that it wasn't sort of... Mm. Though there is sort of score music that sort of comes in, but it doesn't have a huge motif across the series. The music's constantly changing and evolving as the show evolves. Yeah, so we had a mix of like uh, songs that we really liked and a lot of kind of London mm. artists and stuff like that as well, and UK artists, um, and then someone who was composing kind of tracks in between to sort of um, make it feel a certain way. You, also, you mentioned having your sister's costume designer. Was it, yes. was, it, was it weird having your actual sister on set in a show about your relationship <laughs> with your sister? No, she loves being talked about, and that's <coughs> all I'll say. Goodbye. <laughs> 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 no, do you know what is an absolute blessing? And um, what's a very interesting thing is it's absolute nepotism, of course, but um, she is so incredibly talented and I felt so blessed to have her. Sinead, to be honest, normally does big old movies. Um, she came to us doing the show of the new Greta Gerwig Little Women, Little Women movie. Um, and even doing our pilot, she was just about available because uh, an Angelina Jolie movie got pulled. So Sinead is uh, too expensive for us to afford normally. Um, but she has a, an incredible eye, and to have her there, it, it, the whole show felt like quite a family. Like, I've been working with Sharon for almost a decade, and in many ways, you are like a big sister to me. And then to have my real little sister, I, I kind of can't even... I'm, I might choke up thinking about it, but there's one day like my mum came to visit set and to have your actual family visit set. Well, <laughs> mummy came to set one day and we were like, she's probably going to want to spend the whole day. She's like, I've seen enough. This is very boring. Can I go home? <laughs> um, like, mummy, wouldn't it be interesting if you were an extra for the day? Ah, no, no. Get that man out to drive me home again. Um, <laughs> completely uninterested. But she was watching the monitor and she was watching kind of me come into a scene. And she like, uh, she said to Sinead, who's the costume designer and her daughter, she's like, God, that jacket's very nice. Isn't that funny how they put it together? <laughs> and she was like, I did that. That's my actual job. <laughs> oh, God, yeah, yeah. And so it's it, an incredibly special thing to have her there, but also um, separately as a, as a person, she's uh, incredibly... Um, talented and just an eye for colour and that was but sometimes like I wouldn't be allowed to call her shinny on set and stuff like that I wasn't like bully her on set but out, like outside of set absolutely absolutely fine well I, I think in a, in, in a big way what I what I loved about this show but maybe was unintentional was there are very few people who are English or have English parents in it and a lot of it it's at the core is two immigrants um, a huge amount of our cast uh, their parents came to the UK. Um, and so I, I found naturally our chats a lot of the time on set would delve into how people came to be here. And I think that's a very American story and sentimentality. And maybe uh, maybe that connects, will hopefully maybe connect more with America in many ways and the Irish voices and different voices from different places. Um, in terms of the jokes and stuff, I don't know. I actually think it's funny. I never get told in America or Ireland that I talk fast. So it's only <laughs> in England that that happens. And so... Uh, I'm glad we stuck with 
unpronounceable names though. Yes, <laughs> in catastrophe and in this, we're like, no, you learn them. You took <laughs> our land, now learn our names. Um, but um, I know uh, uh, Derry Girls has, has gone out in America and sometimes they need subtitles, but a lot of the time <laughs> they definitely en- enjoy the sentimentality of it as well. Um, I think I, I genuinely think it, it's not something you can spend too much time thinking about you know you 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 have to just make what you want to make it's the same show that's going out on hulu except for literally one song at the end we wanted to make the exact say they will see the exact same show yeah um but i think it's a complex relationship some people might watch it and be like oh it's not funny enough i thought it was going to be more of a comedy and some people might be like oh it's a bit you know they don't delve into those subjects enough or i I think it's maybe going to be different uh, people are more complex than their race yeah. or religion or culture so I think that there, there's a, there's always slightly um, different reactions but honest to God it's always just kind of interesting more than kind of aggravating you know um, people watch it in a different way sometimes I mean with Catastrophe it was we were shown once a week here on Channel 4 and then on a streaming service on Amazon where people watch it all in one go so you do like have half a mind to that because you want it to work as a whole sort of you know, story and um, so you you do think about it, but you can't think about it too much. Yeah, I think if you start worrying too much, you might kind of uh, start trying to please everyone, and that is um, a very silly, silly endeavor as a human. But I won't stop trying. Do you all like me, Hannah? Was like the main the hero fight, uh, uh, Shona's fight is is a set. It was based kind of on a real location and adapted a bit. I think the this. The council fight, which is Anya's fight, is also a set. And I think it was just always that balance of it's got to feel real, but it's got to be practical. We knew we knew we wanted to do the the, the kind of Woody Allen reference, the sort of flowing blocking. We knew we needed a bigger space to do that, but we didn't want to make Shona's character appear like Patrick Bateman. And, you know, yeah. You know, <laughs> just, you, know, yeah. Um, you know, astonishingly wealthy. So it was kind of always trying to get the balance between something that, felt authentic enough <laughs> yeah because you know. people yeah. get so angry <laughs> about that kind of thing yeah when we did our second series of catastrophe we moved into a, a bigger house god <laughs> people were so angry <laughs> oh my god even though we're like we needed more space for cameras give us a fucking break yeah. we're like you'd never be able to afford that <laughs> on a teacher's wage <laughs> <laughs> but we, we we did think about locations quite a lot and with, with with Shona's house a lot of it is and I suppose this is the same I've been here about 12 years and in my house and I think in a lot of um, immigrants houses are sort of echoes of where you're from that you might not have if you were back at home like bits of kind of like uh, kiss me a Irish tea towels that you'd never have in actual Ireland you'd be like the fuck are you doing um, and, and with your house we wanted to have all those like uh, homely little moments and if you're to watch it back in slow-mo it's very considered and there's loads of like pictures of Ireland and stuff and with Anya's house uh, I remember talking to a friend That's so true isn't I've it got, yeah I've yeah, got, yeah. A, I've got a map of Ireland Ireland in your house just in case you need to know where Carlo is before you have sex um, there oh, on we go um, <laughs> I'm but actually, it was completely considered, and and the the idea that you think one of the flats looks small. I'm not sure if you know, but there are our flatmate, um, our flat, which is Bradley's flat, and we have lots of bits of um. So Bradley, well, Kadif is from Montserrat, and so we had like little flickers of Montserrat around the place. But I'm also in his apartment. I live in his house. We don't live really together, and there's an element of when you move in with someone, and they're in a couple you're sort of, if, if it's not a big space, which most people don't live in in London, you're sort of backed into your own bedroom and your bedroom has to be your whole ecosystem and your whole life and the, the kind of loneliness of that, of living somewhere where if someone hangs out their washing suddenly or someone's on the couch watching TV, you're sort of not included and you're sort of left with your laptop in your on your own and that was something we did take into consideration when we were building the sets and, 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 and making it that it does feel small and that you're... Um, yeah, how, how that affects a lot of people living in cities and, and how you have a life where you, your sort of world is X amount of metres by X amount of metres. So also. saying it looks small is actually a compliment. Yeah, it's exactly <laughs> what we plan to do. Um, I think uh, for me, the, the, um, what, was, what was tough more was 
when we when I was writing for us to make Sharon because I I know Sharon so well and we do have a natural sister quality that it, it like I've said before we didn't want to make you like Sharon in catastrophe and what I wanted to do was to lean into the Sharon who I know who's very loving and maternal soz babes for the vulnerability <laughs> but um <laughs> that to, to explore that and so with 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 the character it was um I didn't find it too difficult. I, I think, uh, interestingly, where it would come up would be with costume um, and with certain jokes. I know there's a scene in episode four that we have with the mother, and there was that one day where I just knew in my gut, I was like, oh, no, this is me being Ashling and a bit showboating, and Anya isn't showboating. And you kind of see the end of it there with them um, when we're singing a Cranberry's song, that I'm more likely to stand behind my sister and back her up. Whereas I think me, I kind of stand out in front of them like, guys! And in those tiny moments to, to find where it's where it's Ashling and where it's Anya. And in, when we were even making the costumes, where it would look like a, an outfit that I might wear in a panel show versus where it would be Anya. In, and it would be just a slight thing. Um, uh, and it's sort of a gut instinct a lot of the time about where something's gone too far and you're sort of relying on your gut a lot of the time. Um, and similarly with, 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 with certain scenes, it would maybe be written half with my sister in mind or my best friend Brona, who's here with Sharon, and it sort of culminates in making a relationship uh, that way. But yeah, but um, was it wasn't actually as hard as I. It, sorry, it wasn't wasn't that hard actually. Is the answer to your question. <laughs> yeah, I mean, do you know what? We've both been immigrants here quite a long time, and I suppose maybe our our sentimentality is is natural. And it, it's funny because Gavin's mother is Irish. Um, Sinead, obviously the costume director is uh, our, um, uh, designer is Irish that there were a lot of people again with immigrant backgrounds in, in, in the show and Fiona McDermott who is our commissioner at Channel 4 is second generation Irish so we're really like rats you should try and get rid of <laughs> um, because we will take your jobs um, but in terms of I think England and the UK is made up of, of a huge amount of immigrants and I don't think um uh, and the children of immigrants, and I don't, I don't think that we're so far apart as as we'd like to believe. Um, it, one one example would be maybe sometimes in the reading of something, and like I said earlier about about Catherine, uh, our our casting director, is when something might seem really mean, but it's a sign of love, like like Sharon punching me all the time. Now that's actually not something myself and my sister have, but Sharon's very fighty. Um, <laughs> And that sort of punching thing. Yeah. Do you remember that day? Yeah. Oh, now, now. Um, like, I had such a big bruise that day after episode three because she go for it every time, um, punching me in the arm. And um, I, I, th I think that what sounds harsh on the page when you see it is maybe something that maybe culturally is When it's is done in a lovely, lilting Irish bro, yeah. it ah, becomes it. instantly charming. Yeah. I, I do think, though, that there is a sort of extra layer of something yeah. that that an Irish audience will feel like they're being spoken to just that little bit more. Do I you think know what Chris O'Dowd said it with Moon Boy? Um, there would be um, the episode of Moon Boy, which is a Sky show, which uh, would exist for someone watching it. And then if you were Irish watching it, there'd be a jingle on a TV show in the background yes. that an Irish person would hear or would know or the references to something like Italia 90. Oh, or how someone uh, answers the phone, 0412985166. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and that there'd be those levels. And I think actually the same with Dairy Girls, that there's a certain level that Irish people will understand and then there's a certain level for Northern Irish yeah. people who've grown up in Northern Ireland watching that. That's a totally different level of comedy. And so there are. it's almost like a, a little game show that there's hidden little maybe tricks and bits in there for mm. Irish people. So you're welcome. Um, <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Um, an amazing charity called Refuge. Um, I think as well, you know, uh, I know, is Deborah Francis White about? Deborah Francis White, where are you, Deborah? There you are, our lovely Deborah. Um, Deborah Francis White runs a guilty feminist. And in terms of, I know it's an issue that comes up a lot. And Deborah, we've chatted about it before. Go, Deborah. It, um, uh, uh, Deborah, but no, no, we've chatted about it before with Refuge and in terms of, um, uh, uh, dealing with certain subjects so I, I would feel remiss in maybe talking about domestic abuse within comedy I don't feel it can't be done um, and I do feel uh, comedy might be a way of, of, of putting it to the fore of, of, of people's minds when it's something um, so prevalent in society uh, because I haven't gone through it 
Um, but I do feel like there's a voice out there to be had in terms of how you can get through it through comedy and through humour. And I'm sure you meet a huge amount of women who do have fantastic sense of humour and that doesn't wash that away. And I know Deborah and I have talked about that uh, on numerous many times, how with the Guilty Feminist podcast that Deborah runs, how you can um, bring certain subjects into the fore um, through using comedy. I don't think people lose their sense of humor if it's there i think it can be totally pushed to the side but i know you find with your the the humor of all the women who work a refuge is and we've done comedy nights for it yeah. and i think that's something when you look at dairy girls and you look at and that is one of the few shows at a time when everyone should be going what the hell is happening in northern ireland because it has such it will have such a big effect on what will happen in this country and and the dairy girls is one of the few shows that's actually talking about Northern Ireland at a time, at a time when I'm like, why isn't this on the news every night? And I think the same with, um, I would hope at some point, maybe there will genuinely be a comedy of, uh, uh, which deals with the issues of domestic abuse because I feel like women don't fucking lose their sense of humour. No, you're um, right. I think lots of sisterhood, lots of resilience, mm. lots of amazing female friendships that come we're, about. We're, maybe. we're doing one. I mean, I, I'm, oh. I'm not saying it's not a hard sell. It is a fucking yeah. hard sell because, you know... For all the obvious reasons, but I 100% agree with Ashling. It's 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 storytelling, and 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 sometimes when you're dealing with a difficult subject, you are desperately in need of you know finding humor, of finding a, a laugh within it, because people don't stop having a sense of humor. They don't lose their characters. Stupid things don't stop happening, and you know um, I think comedy is a really really valuable way to tell any story that's difficult. Mm. So Thank yes, you. Refuge, please donate for them. They've <laughs> had a lot of fun and puts of late. So yeah. I think that I think that's a suitable place to end, and we also have run out of time because they're showing a film here. On the when screen. people run out of time, it is a very suitable it place to end. Actually, <laughs> I want to thank you so much. Thank for you, and thank you so show. much, everyone, for coming along. Amazing. Thank you.